What's up everyone? It's Gary with Fresh Room the Fire and Fungi. Today I wanted to talk about the differences between shrink wrap and parafilming sterile petri dishes. So it, for those of you who aren't familiar um, with tip of the cap mushrooms, they kind of coined this a couple years back um, the process of shrink wrapping your petri dishes. So if you've seen any of my other videos, um, I exclusively use parafilm, but I am considering some benefits of the shrink wrap after reading the uh, tip of the cap mushroom. They have a post on Facebook about the shrink wrap and I decided to do a comparison video. So, so far, um, there's, you know, what, what are the main objectives for sealing a Petri dish? So if you grab a Petri dish without parafilm or shrink wrap, it's just a dish that has a loosely fitted lid. Um, so it, it contains agar, which is used to grow the mushrooms on. And after you do your transfers, or if you are storing Petri dishes and you don't want them to dry out, or if you want to protect them while you're transporting them, like from the incubator to the workstation, it's always a good idea to have um, some sort of a seal. So some people use uh, shrink wrap like this. So it's a poly, polypropylene plastic. These are, or it's not a polypropylene. I'm not sure what kind of plastic, but basically it comes with a perforated strip that's 145 by 28 millimeters. So I'll post the link on our Amazon affiliate page to the actual product, but it fits around the Petri dish perfectly. And the idea is that it will keep the lid closed so that no contaminants can get in. And it also allows the mycelium to grow without the media drying out. So traditionally, parafilm is used instead of shrink wrap, but I thought I would explore the differences of these today. Parafilm is a paraffin wax, so it's kind of a stretchy substance. So shrink wrap is not stretchy at all, and it only shrinks when you heat it with a heat gun like this. Where paraffin, it's not sticky, but it kind of stretches out. So once it starts to stretch, then it will go back on itself. And that's what forms that really nice seal. There is some gas exchange with parafilm that's important for growing the mycelium. So I wonder if the shrink wrap will inhibit growth in a way. Um, but one of the problems with parafilm, besides that it rips pretty easily, is that oftentimes a lot of condensation will build up so this is a lion's mane culture, and you can see it's parafilmed, and um, just by bringing it out of the incubator and setting it on the surface, it created a little condensation. So one of the claims for the shrink wrap over the parafilm is that it kind of mitigates this condensation. In my opinion, I think that temperature is more of a factor than the sealing material, but we'll t put that to the test right now. So I'm going to parafilm half a stack of plates and then I'm going to shrink wrap half a stack of plates and then I'm also going to do transfers from this lion's mane mushroom and then for half the transfers I'll use parafilm and for half the transfers I will use the shrink wrap and then the idea is that I will incubate them both um, kind of monitor their growth and see if there's a difference in condensation I like to always push the edge of what I think I know. And the only way to do that is with science. So by doing half the plates with the parafilm, half the plates with the shrink wrap, hopefully we get a good comparison and we'll be able to decide the pros and cons of shrink wrap versus parafilm. Okay guys, I'm gonna flip this around and get some lab work going. Try to ignore all these grain bags that I have cooling next to me. Um, I'm going to be inoculating those tomorrow, but the main focus of this video is just parafilm and shrink wrap. Okay, let's flip this around. Okay guys, so 
Um, neither of these are completely sterile, but I always try to work with the inside um, piece of the paraffin that's against the plastic, and to me that's a little more sterile than the outside part that comes off the roll. And then for these shrink wrap strips, the inside should be generally sterile too. So I feel like there's a pretty similar comparison between parafilm and shrink wrap as far as the sterility goes. But nonetheless, I will do a whole rack of these in parafilm and then a whole rack of these shrink wrapped and then I'll leave them in front of the fluid for a few days and see if one of them is drying out or having more condensation or if there's any differences whatsoever between the two. Um, and then I'm going to do my lion's mane transfers on these plates, so I'll set them off to the side, and then these ones are just the original comparison. So I'll go ahead and fire up the heavy duty heat gun, so I'll post a link for this in the description. Um, basically it's just a hot air gun that shoots off air, and it has this nice little stand so I can work with it in front of the flow hood, and that way I'll have a constant stream of hot air to do my shrink wrapping. So I'm trying to carefully not touch the inside, but it's a little bit difficult to do that 100%. Okay, and then basically what I do is, because they're fit exactly the size, I'll just kind of put that shrink wrap right over the middle of the dish and then gently just run it through the heat gun and you don't want to overdo it because there are perforations here so just one quick go around seems to be enough it's very firm and it looks like it's ready to protect itself against any contamination all right is the stack of the shrink wrap plates and now I'll do the parafilm. So what I like to do for parafilm is take my four rolls, or uh, my roll I mean, and then cut it into strips of four. And it doesn't have to be exact, but this is the way that I found out works pretty quickly. And then I'll start by making a little pilot rip right here, and that helps me peel off the parafilm. So one benefit I noticed right off the bat is that the parafilm actually has two waste products where the shrink wrap kind of just shrinks on itself, so that's kind of a benefit. But in order to use the shrink wrap, you have to have enough space for the heat gun. So that could be a downfall if you don't have as much workspace. Also quite a bit of more dexterity involved when you're doing the parafilm. It's definitely a, more of a skill. Okay, so there 
here is the parafilm and then the shrink wrap. And now I am going to do my inoculations. So this plate has been parafilmed, which it's not that difficult to remove. You just gotta get an edge going. Lion's main culture, and I am going to transfer that onto these four petri dishes, and then I'll do two parafilm, two shrink wrap. So now I'm going to stick these in the incubator at 72 degrees and I'll do some plate readings after about four or five days to see if there's any difference in growth. I try to keep the sizes pretty consistent, um, but yeah, so this is the shrink wrapped and then this is the parafilm. What's up everyone? So it's been 72 hours since we started our comparison with the shrink wrap and parafilm. So I just wanted to go through and see if there's any differences after 72 hours. So this is normally when I do my first plate reads because there are um, organisms that would show up within 72 hours. So you can see right off the bat, we do have what appears to be some penicillium mold on the um, the parafilm plate. And you can see the auger levels are pretty similar and the sh first shrink rack plate is clean. So right off the bat, there's a, a difference between 
sterility that I'm noticing between the parafilm and the shrink wrap. So I'll go through the rest of these Petri dishes. This one I kind of played with in the open air in the lab, so I'm not too surprised about catching um, a penicillium. And it's that time of year, so normally as we start to see bulbs emerge from the soil, which right now it's um, April 4th here in Denver, we're starting to see uh, signs of trichoderma, penicillium, and possibly aspergillus emerge from the soil. So I'll go ahead and compare the, and it looks like another mold here, but this time it's on the, the shrink wrap plate. So one contamination shrink wrap, one contamination parafilm. I'll just set these off to the side so we can kind of watch these molds grow, but normally I'm hitting about 1% contamination especially this time of the year so it's not too surprising that a couple plates might have some penicillium which is just ambient mold that's present in the air especially during the spring and late fall all right so i'm noticing that these two parafilm plates have slightly less condensation than this lion's mane dish which is kind of surprising. Um, all the the hearsay is that you know the uh, the shrink wrap is supposed to minimize condensation. So I don't know. It's only 72 hours, so we'll see how that holds true. And I'll go through this whole stack and kind of just lay them out. Um, this stack is the shrink wrap, and this stack. To my right is the parafilm so I'll bring the camera in close and just go through one at a time and I'll kind of rate the amount of contamination or condensation that we see on these petri dishes okay guys so this left is the shrink wrap and the right is parafilm so so far these both look clean a little bit of condensation not too bad and as we go down the stack two plates in both of them are the same this one has a little bit of condensation this parafilm kind of drops off and then I expect you know, both to be sterile a little bit of condensation here and a little bit here so so far parafilm, slightly more condensation. Overall, pretty similar. All right, so after 72 hours, they're very similar. Shrink wrap and parafilm each had one moldy plate and then about two or three with condensation. So I'll do another read in about a week and see if there's a big difference in the moisture content of the agar, which will be shown by um, a reduced volume with whichever one is leaking more air, if any. I think so far, you know, I'm pretty surprised at the results of both. They both seem pretty similar, and I'll talk about my thoughts at the very end on both processes and which one I think I'm gonna use from now on. everyone? So it's been about two and a half weeks since we started our shrink wrap versus parafilm experiment. And I wanted to go through some of the different results. It actually looks super similar, but let's go through and see if there's any big differences. All right, so right off the bat, like I said before, there was a, two plates that ended up getting contaminated with some kind of a penicillium, but you can see the growth on the shrink-wrapped lion's mane. It looks pretty good. The, the auger is still at the same level or maybe slightly less, but it didn't really lose too much weight. On the shrink wrap, And then as far as condensation, 
let's go through these plates and see if there's any major differences in condensation. So the ones on the right are parafilm and the ones on the left are shrink wrapped. So both of the top plates have a little condensation. I guess the parafilm has a little bit more. And then as we go down the stack, looks like there's a little bit of bacterial condensation on the parafilm or um, a bacterial contamination. And this could be a symptom of condensation forming slightly more condensation. All right, so let's uh, take a final look at these lion's mane cultures. And you can see that they're very similar in growth rates. I would say that overall, they both did a really good job of maintaining moisture and allowing for mushroom growth. This, um, the shrink wrapped one with the lion's mane actually has a little more condensation. So that's kind of interesting, but overall, I'm pretty surprised at how well the shrink wrap held up and worked. And I'm gonna have to consider various uses for the shrink wrap. So right off the bat, I noticed that the parafilm is kind of sticky, which that's kind of helpful when you're moving plates back and forth in the lab. But I really like how easy it was to grab fresh petri dishes that didn't have cultures. So maybe for storing plates longer term, it might be a better idea to use the shrink wrap. And then for working with cultures, I think parafilm is the way to go. Um, it's a tried and true method, but it does seem to have a little bit less contamination with the shrink wrap. And when it comes down to the, the culture longevity, there might be something said about um, the parafilm because it allows it to breathe a little bit better than the shrink wrap. So I think shrink wrap for um, sterile dishes long term and then parafilm for working with cultures and possibly a little bit better for long term storage because it does allow for that gas exchange. Mm -hmm.